Melissa is a fantastic actress. Unbelievably talented. She's very sweet. Nice, genuine person. Down to earth. Very spontaneous. Really crazy. She's just a really fun girl. Hi, I'm Melissa McIntyre, and this is my life unscripted. Hey, welcome to my apartment. Come on in, I'll show you around. Oh, this is my dog, Morris. He's about five months old. He's a toy poodle. He's my cutest little baby boy. Come on in. Okay, so this is my very first apartment on my own. This kitchen's really in, um, in the works. There's a lot I need done with it yet. As you can see, I started painting. Um, I didn't do a very good job. My boyfriend's a little better at that than me. It's not the prettiest kitchen yet. But anyways, this is my dining room. This is the room that probably needs the most work, but uh, I'm gonna get some authentic old movie theater seats in here. My friend Ashley um, did this in Metal Shop in grade 12, and you can put all the little tea lights in here and light them all, and it's really, really pretty. I'm not sure where this is going yet. I made this. This is James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, Elvis Presley. Uh, just a little interesting wall hanging, because I'm trying to do the whole old Hollywood glamour in here. As you can tell by these curtains, Kind of gives it the look of a movie theater, which I think is really cool. <laughs> what is this? Where's my espresso? <laughs> this is my living room. This is my beautiful couch. I don't want to kiss. <laughs> no. This is Colin. He's my boyfriend. That's my boy. And he can paint. <laughs> this is my, my new toy. Colin showed me how to use it. I drilled a hole myself not two weeks ago, which was very exciting. I drilled the holes in the ceiling here so I could uh, put my amazing movie curtains up. So I actually can do it. This isn't just a show. This is real right here, right now. Yeah. <laughs> These have to go back up on the wall. That was a nice little find. She reminds me of a jazz singer. And this, I bought off eBay. There's nothing really that special, but I thought it was pretty and the colors matched the room. So, you know, just go with it. And this little critter, who poos an awful lot, <laughs> is my rabbit, Harold. He's a very, very sweet little boy. He loves to cuddle. Don't be alarmed, I'm not pregnant or planning on having a child. This is for my dog. Um, this is where he stays when I'm at work. Um, but the problem is, is that he can get out. So I started putting a blanket over top of it, and he chewed a hole through the blanket and still got out. Come here. <laughs> That's my amazing acrobatic toy poodle. This is my bedroom. I just got this new bed. I hadn't lived until this bed. This thing's amazing. I got all new bedding and new pillows and new everything. It's so comfortable. You can see the, the makeup on uh, my dresser there. That's nothing. <laughs> this is disgusting. This is my makeup case. Um, I've been obsessed with makeup for pretty much as long as I can remember. Fake eyelashes don't work. Even if you buy the expensive ones, they don't stay. And don't use too much glue because it hurts. I used to go into my mom's makeup and come out with a nice blue eyeshadow and red lipstick and she'd say, Melissa, did you get into my makeup? No. <laughs> I used to love it. I used to take makeup from her and from my grandma and I used to put it in that uh, little tickle trunk and. I'd get all dressed up and I'd put on shoes that were about 15 sizes too big and put on a dress and put on my makeup and then I'd run downstairs, Mommy, look, Mommy, look. She was always very happy, very bubbly and uh, very outgoing. I do not recall when the first spark of performing came because I've been singing for as long as I can remember. She started to sing while she was still in the crib before she could actually speak. So I think that was probably my first clue. Melissa Erin McIntyre. 
first time I, I sang in front of an audience was uh, when I was seven. I did a little beauty pageant. The only one I ever did, but it kind of helped get me out of my shell. I don't know where she got it from, honestly. I watch her and I, I, don't, I don't know how she does it. I really don't. As soon as she started doing musical theater, I knew this is what she wanted to do. I suppose you'd like to know somewhat about where you're going. Would I? The Secret Garden I did uh, in St. Catharines with Garden City Productions. She had the lead role in that one, and uh, actually the director asked an agent in Toronto to come and see her, and that's how she actually became professional. So I pretty much owe the director my career right now. When Melissa got a call from her agent and to say that she was going to audition for Degrassi, I couldn't believe it. I was like everyone else, the girl with the crush on Joey Jeremiah. I used to come home and watch the reruns after school all the time. So I, I knew what I was getting into, which was really nerve-wracking but really cool. She actually read for a different character. I don't remember which one it was first. People like me at Degrassi. Sure, I'm not as popular as Ashley, but I'm a pretty close second but they liked her more for the character of Ashley. You know, it's good being friends with Ash. She keeps me in the public eye. I came home from school, and my mom was like, so, um, you have to go back to, to Toronto. And I was like, for what? She's like, you have to go and meet the rest of the cast and crew. And it took me a second, but I ended up crying because I finally clued in that, oh my God, I got the part. We laughed, we cried, we just, we hugged, we just, it was, it was wonderful. This is going to be the best year ever. We come from a small town, so every May to November, we would live, we would find an apartment in Toronto and live there and during the week, and then we would go home on weekends, be with the rest of the family, and then we did this for the six months for three years and now she's on her own, she has an apartment and she's loving it. I had to work extremely hard to, to even get to Toronto. It was crazy, but totally worth it. <laughs> hey, we're gonna look for uh, Ashley's bedroom. There's a lot of memories in there. That's where Ashley and Jimmy had their first kiss. Good morning, I'm Melissa McIntyre and this is Epitome Pictures. This is where I work. It's another bright, early, early morning. Come on inside. This little corridor here, a lot happens here. Pretty much everything from breakups to, oh, they're filming. Breakups to stay togethers and hookups. And this right here is hair and makeup. I think that should be my new style. You know what you're wearing today? What color? I have no idea. This one. Oh, okay, yeah. And everyone remembers that she did ecstasy at the end of first season. She, she came back the next year and she was totally ostracized by her friends and she was forced to really reconsider who she was. Funny how something is cool one year and so totally uncool the next. And that became really interesting to us with Ashley and we decided to keep letting that happen each season. She's a character who's experimented with her different looks like a lot of girls do during high school. Ashley's gone from this grade A popularity to um, not having any friends to being sort of comfortable and just learning to find herself with, with her new boyfriend. So her looks have reflected that a lot. Wow, you actually look alive. Thanks, I think. I went from hair mid-arm to next to nothing. It's not like they come up to me and be like, Melissa, you're cutting your hair tomorrow. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. Like when, uh, when I first went like really, really short, that was, um, that was a mix of my want to have something different and the show's want to have something different. So it worked out pretty well and we went very extreme, which was really cool, it was a lot of fun. We've taken her through all kinds of crazy looks. Perfect girl and kooky, really dark goth girl and now she's sort of rock and roll vintage girl and she just wears all of them. 
It's awesome. I come into work and my outfit's already picked up for me. But underneath it, she's, she's very relatable and I think that people look at her and see themselves, which is a great quality to have. The infamous Ashley Army boots. Melissa brings this sort of consistency. You know, I think despite all her changes, you still really feel for Ashley and you know who Ashley is. And she has tons and tons of pairs of these and like the old Converse kind of just ratty shoes. And I think that's the most important element that I see that Melissa brings is this kind of form of consistency. This is such a cool skirt. Ashley's all about the layers. I really can't picture anyone else playing her. She's got a lot of jackets. This is the kind of stuff that I would actually wear outside of work. She really makes it her own and it's really unique. Um, she's got all these little accessories. This is Ashley's famous rocker chick bracelet. It's that whole undone on purpose kind of look. Okay, so maybe three's a bit too many. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met Melissa, it was when I first started working on Degrassi. She was actually the first person I talked to on the cast um, the first day that we all met. I didn't have much experience, so she kind of showed me what to do, introduced me to everyone. It's really nice of her. She was hot. <laughs> I think when people first look at Melissa when they meet her, they think she's really quiet and sort of just laid back. And when you get to know her, she's really loud and really crazy and really fun. When we hang out, we always have a good time. I can't get into exactly what we do, but we, uh, we always have fun. You can say anything around her. You don't need to be guarded because she's a very unjudgmental person. She makes it very easy for you to, to love her um, on camera and off camera. She's very, very funny. We've started like in the first season together and our characters have gone through so much together. And I've always really enjoyed having scenes with her because she's great to play off of. The song is stronger. Anyone with half an emotion would know that. Yeah, what do you know about me? I researched it. I know a lot more about it than you do. <gasps> Peach? Melissa has a seriousness about her and a gravity, and she holds a lot of things back, I think. And so when you see her on screen, you can see the character also holding back. And I think that's why people are intrigued partly by Ashley and also by Melissa, because she's not, she's not gonna wear it all for you. She's gonna wait for the scene to demand it of her, wait for the story to demand it of her. And that's a, that's a great talent. You ready? Yeah, for real. We were in Miss Kwan's drama class and we were doing plays and the goal of Ashley's presentation was to get across the fact that I can't change her. My character cannot change her. To sit in the audience and watch her and Jake do this, this scene, it hit me really, really hard for some reason. Thou must be married to no man but me, for I am born to tame you, Kate. I don't even think I was acting that day when I was watching them. I was really upset. I felt like apologizing to her for trying to change her, even though it wasn't really her, it was her character. It was a very powerful, powerful display that they put on. It was very good. <laughs> okay, we're gonna look for uh, Ashley's bedroom. There's a lot of memories in there. That's where Ashley and Jimmy had their first kiss. I like to put on this front like I'm super cool about everything, but I'm really not. And there were a lot of people watching. I was definitely like, oh, this is a problem. There's a lot of making out that happened in that room. Kissing Sean. Kissing Craig. She's gorgeous. I felt so lucky. I was making out with Melissa McIntyre. You just got to the point where you just don't care and you don't worry about it. Something happened, and so the next day we had to actually redo the scene again. So I'm just like, okay, whatever, let's make out. So I got to make out with Melissa again, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell who's a better kisser. Sorry. Maybe they can do a special and uh, see who's a better kisser. But I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna come out victorious. Jake's just, he's, uh... So I have no bedroom anymore. Um, it's probably just being used for something else. That's, that's life. They change everything around here all the time. The hair is straightened, like super straight. It looks like you spent way too much time getting ready. Melissa is a fantastic actress, but what impressed me most about Melissa is that she's such a nice person, which I think is more important. Me and Jake are really good friends, so every scene that we do, we're gonna have tons of fun. He's hysterical. He's a weirdo, but he's hysterical. Is it you and Aubrey that go on and on? We have these moments. 
just feels so real and um, I've just been so blessed to be able to work with Melissa so much. We have a meeting with his music guy. How much do you love him now? Best thing about a new apartment is buying new stuff. I'm totally into antiques, and I'm looking for uh, some little stuff to decorate my apartment with. There's some great shops down on Queen West, so let's go. This is Cindy. She's not near as cool as my old Mazda, and she's automatic, and she doesn't go very fast, but she's reliable, and that's what I like about her. No, 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 don't shoot inside my car. It's really dirty. Don't, don't, don't. Please don't. Oh, yeah? Is it the whole thing? Yes. <laughs> Whole mod thing. Oh, this is so cool. One of the greatest things about being in Toronto now is that I don't have to have the same thing as everyone else. I wish I had birds to put in here. That's so awesome. Did we do it? No, no, yeah. no. No way. I will never go into IKEA just because everyone has it. This is so cool. I love going into those antique stores that have just tons and tons of stuff. And you could spend a good few hours trying to dig through and find little treasures. Antique doorknobs are very cool. On my bedroom door. Mm -hmm. How cool would that be? That's, that's one of the greatest things about antiques is if you can find something that's a rarity, you've, you've struck gold. Yay, purchase number one. That's awesome. Where'd it go? I can see it in the dining room. I could also see it in the bedroom. I don't know. Mm. I can't decide. Dodd's kidney pills. <laughs> that sounds really dangerous. <laughs> I have no idea if that's safe. I highly doubt it. Apparently not. <laughs> I watch you all the time. Oh, do you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, every week. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, can we go in? Sure, have a look around. Awesome. Lots to see. Cool. I like having that unique little thing, you know, that, that little something that sets you apart. That one is perfect, but so out of my price range. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I'm cheap. Oh my god. That's unbelievable. I'm in love with that table, it's amazing. That's awesome, I just bought the most beautiful table I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Hey, let's go sing. If I have the worst day of my life, I can shut myself off in a room where no one is there, no one can hear me, yeah, and yeah. I just sing and it's the most therapeutic thing that there yeah, ever yeah. was for me. Good. So we, got, we, we have to do this really fast, apparently. For episode 420, we were doing a song where you and Jake do a song, it, uh, I guess you're playing um, in, the, in the gym or something? I don't know. So. Oh, the prom. Jim's really cool. He's uh, our, our music guy. And they don't want it to be the usual Ashley Downer, you know, Tori Amos thing. He writes the melodies for all the songs that, that we perform on Degrassi from season one to season four. Um, he's a really nice guy. I get the good fortune of uh, going and working with him a lot, which is really cool. Cool chord. Just like every other song in the world goes. Oh, just tell me how I can be all that you ask of me. First time I sang actually was season one, and I was so excited that I was going to get to sing. I was so excited. Free to be who I am. Wow, we are so going to be the stars of the cabaret. Uh, up next, Hell Hath No Fury. That scene in 318 in Rock and Roll High School, and she just sings that song to Craig, and she totally destroys him. When it 
that's a fantastic moment. I love that. I just think that's that's really where her strength lies. So I'm thinking that it, it like like for example, a groove. Um, just try the words. Like, yeah. Yeah, keep it really flat right, like cool. that, you know? I would love to be the jazz singer in a gown in a smoky little bar with the, just a piano player. That's like that's that's like the ultimate career for me, I think. Melissa sings the classics. <laughs> okay. This is a CD, Melissa sings the classics. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Jeff. Well. See you later. Got my stuff. Degrassi's given me a lot over the four seasons that I've been in it. I'd like to think anyways that I've grown as an actor and that I, I kind of have an idea where I want to go now. I would love to get into movies. I would love even more to be on Broadway. I, I love musical theater. It's my biggest passion because I'm a singer. Always have been, always will be.